One of the reasons why I bought the S52X is because of Gerald Undone's review of it. And in that review, he showed the SSD handle from Condor Blue. The second I saw that, I was inspired. I want it, I need it. However, after buying the S52X, I was basically penniless and I didn't have the money to invest in a kit like the SSD handle from Condor Blue. Now, I would say right now that the Condor Blue handle is top of the line and very professional. So if you're a kind of guy that wants that best of the best, that's gonna be the pick for you. However, I wasn't just about to give up because I'm a DIY guy and we live in the age of 3D printing. So I got to work and I designed what is the Fondor Blue. This is a SSD handle made in the spirit of the Condor Blues handle. I'll give a lot of credit to them because they're the ones who pioneered this idea. I do think there's a couple things that I did better than their design, but mostly that's because I was able to look at their design and then improve upon that. However, due to the fact that this is DIY and 3D printing, there are some things that simply won't be able to reach that level of premium that Condor Blue can offer. That being said, this is a fantastic solution and it's more than good enough than anything else on the market right there besides the Condor Blue because, well, simply put, it's me and Condor Blue right now that are the only ones that have this. <laughs> so I can safely say that this right here is the second best SSD handle in the entire world. If you ain't first, you're last. Now, as you can see here, I have a couple different versions, and that's because I wanted to make this as adaptable as possible because different people would require different SSDs or different cameras to put it on or different mounting solutions, and so I wanted to make it something very modular. This is the one I use personally, and it's in the color of Asimov, and of course, I'm recording right now with my S5X. This right here is a magic arm, and it's the main mounting solution to the camera, but you could put a NATO rail here or the F22. There's a lot of different mounting solutions because it basically uses the one-fourth screw that all camera mounts use, two of them right here. What's more is that I also designed for various different M.2 enclosures. This one here is ITGZ. Now, unfortunately, they were pretty rude to me when I reached out to them and wanted to do some sort of sponsorship thing. They basically told me to go kick rocks, and so that's exactly what I did. I shelved their enclosure also due to the fact that I saw a video that was talking about the thermal capabilities of what is now the Je. And what's more is that the Joey's design, I think is much better because it's got these two grooves. It makes it to where if you try to slide it in the wrong way, it won't go. That's good because the USB port is slightly offset. So if you turn it around, it wouldn't connect in properly. But due to the fact that it's got these grooves, you can only plug it in the right way and boy, is it super smooth. It's really easy to get in, a little stiff to get out, which I think is absolutely perfect. I worked really hard on that and it took me about 20 different tries to get that right. So hope you appreciate it. Go sign up to the Patreon and uh, support me that way or like and subscribe, share with your friends. You know the thing, do the things, all of them. Anyways, so as you can see here, I have this HDMI cable that I wrapped around the USB cable. I got my desk view monitor here with an F22 mount on it and that's really fantastic. I love this so much. The Ulanzi F22 system is expensive, but it is the best in my opinion. These two cords here plug into the camera and I can take this little cable here and stuff it around the back of this magic arm grip. And that keeps it out of the way as I'm dialing it in with my Tilta, Tilta follow focus. This goes on the side of the camera. With just the cage and these two things, this is a super minimalistic camera setup. It's pretty incredible. I've been working on this for quite some time. I think it was DSLR Shooter that gave a video about a compact cinema rig. The problem is though, is I like to hold my camera down a bit more because if I'm holding the camera on the side here, I'm so tall that I'm always kind of filming at a downward angle and that, that's not flattering at all. So usually I'll try to put the camera at chest height or even a little bit lower. And then of course that is really uncomfortable given the fact that the one biggest 
weakness of the S52X is the fact it doesn't have a fully articulating screen, and it's even more of a nightmare if you plugged in an HDMI or a USB-C cable. Oh, super annoying. But that's okay because I would use this desk view monitor even if the S52X had a better screen. Simply put, this thing is fantastic, and I like manual focus lenses, so I really need to see very clearly those peaking dots. It's pretty tough when you have a tiny little LCD screen, and this thing is going to have 2,800 nits of brightness, so even when you're out in full bright sunlight, you're going to be just fine. And of course, the way that I actually hold it is super comfortable. I can kind of lock my arm to my side if I'm getting a bit tired, and that, that kind of keeps the weight off of my back or my shoulders so I can have better posture. I was even thinking about using some sort of lanyard and strapping it to my neck and just distributing that weight evenly so I can kind of use my whole body to carry the cinema camera if I'm doing a job that's six, seven, eight, or even nine hours of filming. Now, one of the last things I'm going to say about this is I'm kind of surprised that this project hasn't taken off more because given the fact that I've given all these files away for free to everyone since my first video, and maybe I didn't really accurately portray to people what this was and why they needed it. I mean, if you have a Blackmagic 4K, 6K, 6K Pro, uh, I think the Nikon Z9 also uses USB-C recording, the S52X, and various other cameras. Well, pretty much any camera that uses USB-C recording, this right here is a solution for, and I definitely recommend you to have it. I am gonna be designing some sort of side handle for the camera that people just wanna slide in a SSD to the side of it or something like that. And that way they can kind of have a handle like this and that's all they don't need a monitor. Maybe they just want to use the LCD in the back screen. So I kind of want to hold back a bit and give this design the attention it needs because this thing is pretty awesome and I'm giving away for free and I hope you guys use it. I want to see hundreds of people, if not thousands of people out there, print this design and then use it for $70 a terabyte worth of recording media. See, that's the real issue here is that you can save so much money by using this method. It just slots right into the back of a very premium feeling handle that you would want anyways with your monitor and everything. This is Polymax, by the way. I definitely recommend printing this with Polymax. And of course, link in the description to an affiliate link. If you want to buy some Polymax, which I definitely recommend, go ahead and do that through the link and I get a little bit of a kickback. But Polymax is the way to go. Now, Polymaker did suggest to me a different type of filament for more temperature protection because this is PLA and though it's extremely strong and I use it for my drones, I would say if you're gonna be filming out in the desert or something, you might want to be using PC Max. They're going to be sending me some soon, so I'll give you some updates about that on my channel. Make sure to like and subscribe, and you can check out my shorts. I'll probably put it in something like that. Anyways, guys, this is Dr. Quaz. I already asked you guys to like and subscribe. I really hope you do. Consider supporting me on Patreon, and I'll catch you next time.